Welcome back. Today we are going to get into five things that might be a little bit different than where you're coming from. And don't move to San Diego if these five things are not something you can handle. So jumping right into it, the first thing, if you've seen any of our other videos, other neighborhoods, things that we cover, San Diego as a whole is a pretty suburban community area. Now you do have downtown San Diego, but it's a tiny downtown. It's comparative to, well, we'll talk about LA in a little bit. We just <laughs> drove through there yesterday. That was a mess. But compared to like other big cities where you think downtown, that's the central hub, that's where everything's going on. Now it is some sort of central hub. You're going to have shows down there. You're going to have the gas lamp. You're going to have Petco Park. So there is some big events and stuff down there. You're going to the Radies, like the Shell, the right? The Shell, on, yeah, on Saturday. So concert venue down there, they have other events. So you will find some of those. That's where you're going to find a lot of walkable neighborhoods. But really, San Diego, once you get out of downtown, it's the suburbs. Even as you're getting into like North Parks, going even further, like La Jolla, going up north, Carmel Valley, North County as a whole, East County going into like El Cajones and Santees. They're all like suburban neighborhoods, a lot of master plan communities. Now, some communities are going to have some sort of, you know, character, depending on where you are. But a lot of it is just like cookie cutter homes. A lot of it's just like living in the burbs, a little quieter, especially once you get out of downtown. Sleepy, what time will we go to bed here? 8.30. <laughs> yeah, just not a ton of nightlife. That's the big thing too. So as soon as you leave downtown San Diego, and kind of some, there's a couple other spots like PB and OB and all those where you get a little bit more nightlife. But as soon as, especially as you get moved north from there, up into La Jolla, up into Carmel Valley, up in North County, you're losing that nightlife. A lot of like downtown Encinitas, downtown Carlsbad, things kind of start slowing down a little bit earlier than you might be used to if you're coming from somewhere that is a lot more city. Yeah, and for sure, like definitely you're going to have a lot more outdoor activities you know it's how it kind of works when you start downtown and you move your way out it starts getting a little bit less dense as you go in every direction really downtown san diego all those walkable neighborhoods those are gonna be like the most dense areas now there are some little cities and stuff that are gonna be pretty dense but as san diego got built out as you're going out you know it just turns into suburbs pretty darn quick so if you want city living it's very limited but throughout a lot of san diego there's going to be different feels through different cities different neighborhoods different areas so even most of its suburbs some you're going to have coastal obviously some you're going to have a little further inland some you're going to have when you do get to specific areas, like I'm just thinking like downtown Escondido, that is a little more dense because they built it on a grid system. So there's a few more houses in there. And that is a big reason people move to San Diego. They are looking for that suburban life. They're looking for parks close by. They're looking for schools nearby. And that kind of nightlife feel is not as important to them as just being in a great suburban community. I love the suburbs. Me too. Easy walks to schools. You go to like little community parks. There's just not... A lot, I mean, let's just go back to square one, it's quiet <laughs> a lot of the time. So I don't know, that's, that's why I actually dig San Diego. As you get further and further from that metropolitan downtown San Diego area, neighborhoods get less and less walkable. Um, if you're living downtown, you can, especially if you're working downtown too, you can probably get, get away without having a car. Real quick on that front too, most of the people who are moving out here aren't moving to downtown San Diego. Most of the people that reach out, that give us a buzz, that you know are thinking of relocating here to San Diego are looking for the suburbs. Like we have had clients move out here and they are living in the suburbs and maybe they buy a second home downtown for that walkable for a family member, whatever it might be, that does happen. But specifically people looking for that downtown condo in the heart of Gaslamp, like I would say it's very minimal from, you know, a lot of people who are moving here. So especially cause there's not a ton of housing. Yeah. Like that's a big part yeah, of it. There's not a ton. I mean, you'll see like big high rise and stuff downtown, obviously, but like I said, the footprint's pretty small, but if you guys are thinking about moving out here, just as a quick reminder, we are a real estate team right here in San Diego. So numbers popping up right now, call text or email. We'll hop on a zoom call get you dialed in and figure out which one of these areas might work best for you. So most of the other parts of San Diego, you definitely are going to need a car. So outside of downtown, if you get back in the suburbs, you're definitely going to need a car. Uh, shopping centers are not going to be super walkable. Um, you know, there's obviously going to be outliers, some houses that are super walkable, some neighborhoods like Bressy Ranch where you can walk to Trader Joe's or some neighborhoods even in Encinitas where you can walk to some grocery stores and stuff. 
but it's not the majority. The majority, you're going to be hopping in your car and you're going to be going to the grocery store. So that's the big thing you know, it, that might be a little bit different. We talk to a lot of people from other places and that's a big thing that is a positive in their community is they can walk and go get coffee or they can walk to dinner, especially in like down, like I lived in San Francisco. That's every day for a lot of people, you can walk to dinner. It's not that case here uh, for the most part you are going to be hopping in your car for most things. Yeah, going on dates for dinners. Maybe you're going to be Ubering it down there, which is, I mean, obviously it's everywhere now. So pretty easy to do that. But also as far as like shopping and convenience and all that kind of stuff, while well, you're going to find certain areas are going to be more convenient where you're going to have more options. Like let's just say Encinitas, El Camino Real. The El Camino Real corridor has everything you need from Targets and Home Depots and Kohl's and grocery stores and Sprouts and Trader Joe's and a few little restaurants and stuff. Other than that, like as you get into different little suburban neighborhoods, they're gonna have like their little, not really strip malls, what do you call it, little retail centers mm -hmm. where you might have like a grocery store and then a few other little spots in there. So, I mean, if you do want like those big box stores, there's gonna be certain areas that you might wanna focus on, but everything, you're gonna have your car, it's gonna be within, we always say like a 20 minute drive. So everything you need is really gonna be a 20 minute drive from your little bubble, really within any city. You go up to Oceanside, there's a ton up there. You go out to East County, you're gonna find a bunch of different shopping centers, Chula Vistas. Obviously, we mentioned downtown San Diego, that's gonna be walkable. But other than that, it is a car heavy city. And even though it is a car heavy area, there's not as much traffic as some of the other areas in California. Uh, we were just in LA. We sat in traffic for what, what should have been a two hour drive turned into a three and a half hour drive just because we were sitting in traffic forever. It was literally like once you hit the LA County line and you could look on Google Maps, like do a, do a trip from, from San Diego to somewhere in LA, like Pasadena, whatever. Right when you hit LA, just red, a little yep. bit of yellow. You get lucky, you might get a little yellow, red, red on all the freeways. It was, it's, I mean, it's ridiculous, it's what it is, <laughs> but it's not that bad here. So that's the big thing too is like, we, there's ways to also not be on the freeway. There's ways to get on the coast highway and just kind of cruise. Uh, and as locals, that's what we've been doing all of our lives. There's cut through roads. There's ways to not sit in traffic and our freeways are not as bad as LA. So that's partly because people can get off the freeway and kind of find a different route home. Uh, but there are, um, we've had a lot of construction on the five freeway going north and south in Carlsbad. Hopefully in the next year or two, that's going to be cleared up and then we'll really be in good shape. Yeah, but you're always going to find some construction yeah. and some freeway that's nonstop. There's also uh, the 15 freeway coming back from like Temecula going south on the 15 traffic or they're doing some construction there. Yeah, he mentioned the five. They're just always doing some sort of work and they're like trying to keep up with the growth and with, you know, more cars on the road and this and that. And so they've added carpool lanes and made it a little bit easier to travel around, but it's still, you're going to find some sort of road work at some point. And then also one negative about having to drive everywhere is the gas is super expensive. I, I, I drive a nice little Prius, so it doesn't affect me too much. Fill up a few times every few weeks, but it's like, I don't know, almost six bucks a gallon oh, right yeah, now. Something, like something crazy like that. So 559, I think is what we said 559, yesterday. that's for yeah. 87 low octane mm -hmm. standard gas he drives a big truck so it's a lot more it's not smart yeah <laughs> but there you'll find also uh, a lot of teslas a lot of electric cars a lot of that kind of stuff a lot of solar on roofs and going with the car theme number three is going to be the lack of public transportation so there's a few areas i'll get into the few areas that are good and then i guess every other area just doesn't have <laughs> very good public transportation so the coastal, coastal corridor going from Oceanside all the way to downtown San Diego has a pretty good system. They have like an Amtrak, they have the, what's it called? Coaster. The coaster. I mean, that's okay. I can't <laughs> think of the coaster. <laughs> they have the coaster that goes, that stops in Oceanside, stops in Carlsbad, Encinitas, Solana Beach, Old Town, downtown, probably a few other places, but <laughs> that runs like a lot of times throughout the day, it's pretty convenient. They have big parking lots around there, so you can go park there if you had to commute. The most times that we see a lot of people using it is during events, during Padre games. You'll see the trains fill up pretty quick, so like if you're planning on that, you're living up in North County, you're going down to watch games, yeah, plan accordingly, it's gonna be packed in there. But it's a super easy route. You can take it down to go to Old Town, cruise around there, a bunch of Mexican restaurants, it's pretty fun, like little historic area of San Diego. 
And the other two areas basically going down the eight freeway. So going from like that old town area, going to like Santee, there's a little, it's like a light rail. So it cuts in through like San Diego State. It cuts, you know, all the way down to East County, which is Santee. That's another route to go. Those ones run throughout the day as well. And then in North County, it goes from Oceanside basically to like Escondido. There's another light rail, cruises back through like Cal State San Marcos, another college up there. So you have like those two options. My, my nephew actually, we, my folks live in San Marcos. He lives in Oceanside. We went to my folks the other day. He took his e-bike, he's like 14-ish, took his e-bike from his house to the light rail. I don't know what it's called, the Sprinter maybe, going mm -hmm. through there. Hopped on there, it dropped him off in San Marcos. He e-biked the rest of the way to my folks' house. He said it was a pretty easy trip. Just to add to, there are city buses within mm -hmm. a lot of these communities too. Um, I do have a couple of friends that commute from Carlsbad or San Marcos to downtown San Diego. And the reason that they like to take the train is because they can work for an hour on the way down, work for an hour on the way up. So it's just kind of convenient that way. Obviously, if you get in your car, it's gonna take you probably about the same amount of time to get there, but you're stuck in traffic you're not able to get things done. So for that reason, we do have a bunch of people that do that commute using the coaster down to downtown San Diego. Next up is lot sizes. We help a ton of clients that are looking for kind of that suburban master plan community. It's what we have the majority of here. So that is what we help a lot of people with. And kind of as you think about it, back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, there are a whole bunch of communities where lot sizes are a lot bigger. Um, obviously there's outliers where there's two, three plus acre lots, like in Ranch Santa Fe and some of a bunch of other neighborhoods. But for the most part, 70s, 80s, 90s, you're getting a pretty good size lot, smaller home, but just some land, which as you got closer to the 2000s, everything kind of started shrinking down lot size wise. And so in kind of the early 2000s, you're looking at actually having a yard, probably big enough for a pool, probably big enough to throw the ball around, you know, pretty good lot sizes. But as the availability of land has gotten smaller and smaller, lot sizes have definitely started to shrink. And so if you're looking for new construction, which we don't have a ton of here, if you're looking kind of 2019 up, you're looking at a pretty small lot. You're looking at uh, pretty much a back patio, um, not a ton of space to put in a pool. Uh, some of these communities do have community pools, but you're, you're just getting a lot less space on your lot. But also to kind of mitigate that, a lot of these master plan communities have started putting in really nice amenities, big community pools, tennis courts, parks. Parks are kind of around too, so you can walk to other big parks. Um, and so you have a little bit less usable lot space on your property, uh, but can get out and get on trails and get to these type of places to get outside. And a lot of the new construction, one of the biggest type that we've seen here is kind of these townhome styles. So they're gonna have like a patio, you know, mm -hmm. basically like front or back patio, maybe a small, very small yard. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, like there's one over in Carlsbad, right across the road from Robertson Ranch. It used to be kind of like, I think it was like a, a nursery or some mm -hmm. sort. Yep. That got demolished. So they're building- Pottery store. Pottery store, that's what it was, yes. That is gone. They're building this new, kind of townhome style community up there where they're tight, you're sharing a wall on either side. There's another one where we were filming down in, where was it, Pacific Highlands Ranch. They're building a new community down there. Now this community is like right next to the shopping center, so it's walkable, you like go out your front door. But it's the same style where you have your garage and maybe like a landing on the first, first floor, you go up, that's kind of like your kitchen and your dining slash living room, and then bedrooms are upstairs. So even the new construction, we're seeing a lot more townhomes, a lot more of that style going through the last few years. So if you are looking for a large lot, is that if that's kind of near the top of your list, and it kind of just depends on affordability, um, kind of the more affordable, kind of the outskirts of Oceanside, outskirts of Vista, um, as you go south, um, some of like those deep Scripps Ranch or Poway, you start to get a little bit more space. Um, if you're looking kind of in a higher price point, like I mentioned Ranch Santa Fe earlier, um, you've got a live in Hain, which has a lot of property, um, and as you kind of head south too, you'll find there are some larger lots in uh, kind of the outskirts of Carmel Valley as well. And one last thing about lot size, as you are setting up your search, as you're trying to figure out what areas are gonna be best for me, what kind of size lot do I want? It's very difficult be like, there are search parameters where you could put like, you know, I want a 7,500 square foot lot, but 
it's not always like actually that 7,500. Sometimes it's like a smaller yard. It's going up a hill. It's all considered the lot. So maybe it's even like a 9,500 square foot lot. You know, you can definitely narrow it down like that. Like, but for the most part, when we're helping people search, we're kind of keeping it broad. Let's stick on neighborhoods and check out the houses that are coming up in there. Get eyes on it and just see actually how that lot size fills out. Cause some are situated awesome where you have, it seems like a smaller lot on paper, but you get there, you're like, oh, there's open space behind me or I have a view here. So it just kind of feels more open, feels like you do have more room than you actually are, is on your you know, property. And something that we're really not known for here in San Diego, but it might be a little bit underrated because there's some great areas for food. So the food scene here in San Diego, especially certain areas, I'll call it a few like Oceanside. Let's, Oceanside over these past few years has had a lot of new restaurants, new ideas, new chefs coming in there, new people opening up these restaurants that are local. They're really focusing on like new concepts that are just really solid. Like there's so, I, Oceanside just really sticks out because over the past few years, you just see like, we used to have a podcast and talk about it every week where we're like new restaurants, new things coming in. Oceanside popped up so many times because what's been happening there over the past few years, it's pretty awesome. Like new beer spots, new little pubs, new, awesome restaurants, new, just all kinds of different things from like just grab and go to like really high end restaurants. Rooftop bars. Rooftop too. bars, yeah, which wasn't a thing in Oceanside 10 years ago. And you know, downtown San Diego obviously has a great food scene. That's kind of like, if you see new restaurants opening, a lot of times it's downtown San Diego, it's the Gaslamp Quarter. There's also, as you go further east, into like Mira Mesa's and Kearney Mesa's and that kind of stuff. There's a bunch of good food over there as well. There's little spots for, for different types of food throughout San Diego. Recently, there's been a few places that have got like Michelin, I don't know if they got Michelin stars, but recognition. Addison over in Del Mar uh, is like one of the Michelin star rated restaurants. I looked it up. It's like a pre-fixed meal. <laughs> it's not cheap, but <laughs> I do want to go there to check it out. So. Anyways, we are seeing more and more of that over these past few years. Within some of these communities, we have kind of villages, kind of the downtown areas of like say Encinitas, Carlsbad. Encinitas has Lucadia and downtown old Encinitas. So they all have these little areas though where they have a lot more local food than they do near like the big box stores. You're gonna find your chains kind of in those areas where you got your big box stores. But if you go to the villages or the downtowns of each area, you're gonna have a lot of local spots. Um, we talk about campfires in Carlsbad Village. A lot, a lot of people really love that. Um, Encinitas has just a ton of new restaurants and concepts coming out all the time. Um, there's just a lot of good options kind of in, in those areas. San Diego is also really well known, obviously, for our Mexican food scene. So within a ton of communities, Carlsbad, Solana Beach, Encinitas, National City, Chula Vista, there are a ton of really great Mexican restaurants from kind of taco shop style, all the way up to sit down restaurants, a lot of Mexican seafood too, which is really popular. Um, and kind of our proximity to the border really just brings a lot of that food kind of to the top of the list of great restaurants here in San Diego. And seafood, obviously we're right by the ocean, some great seafood here too. Down in downtown, kind of by Seaport Village, they have like a fish market every, I believe it's Saturday. You go down there, get some super fresh fish, which is pretty awesome. Up in farmer's markets, I just went to the Lucadia farmer's market over the weekend. Bunch of fish, spots, you know, locally caught, all that kind of stuff. Plus a ton of farms that are local, a ton of people making some food up there that's pretty dang solid as well. So there's just a lot of different food scenes, a lot of different areas, and you can kind of pick and choose which one you want. But when you get here, you get explore. You're gonna find a ton. One of my goals this year is to explore more, more places, more food places, more places in general. So. I'll keep you guys filled in, but if you guys are thinking about moving out here, you got some questions, let's dive in. As a quick reminder, we are a real estate team right here in San Diego, and you can call, text, or email. That number's popping up, probably right, right here maybe. Hit us up, we'll jump on a Zoom call, get you dialed in, get all your questions answered, and figure out which spot is gonna work best for you.